Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of a young female patient who presented to emergency department with severe headache. On clinical examination, bilateral severe optic disc edema was noted. Patient was referred for CT head evaluation. On the CT head, as I scroll down, we can see a hyperdense mass within the right lateral ventricle. The lesion appears to be attached to the septum pellucidum and extends to the lateral wall of the right lateral ventricle. The right lateral ventricle is asymmetrically distended with mild periventricular hypodensity concerning for obstructive hydrocephalus with transependymal CSF flow. Also, if you notice, there appear to be some cystic foci within the mass. There are also a few hyperdense regions within the mass which could either represent microcalcifications or microhemorrhages. Patient underwent CT angiogram as part of pre-surgical workup. On the CTA, we can clearly see increased vascularity or new vascularity within the mass. And there are few heterogeneous regions of enhancement within the mass. MRI examination was also performed as part of pre-surgical workup. On the axial diffusion images, we can clearly identify multiple foci of low ADC within the mass, consistent with restricted diffusion. On the axial T2 images, we can clearly see the mass attached to the septum pellucidum extending up to the right lateral ventricle lateral margin. We can clearly identify the cystic foci within the mass, giving an appearance of soap bubble or Swiss cheese. On the axial flare images, the lesion is mildly hyperintense compared to the gray matter clearly demonstrating the attachment to the septum pellucidum. On the axial SW images, we can see multiple foci of signal dropout, likely represents calcifications versus microhemorrhages. Following administration of intravenous contrast, we can see multiple regions of heterogeneous enhancement within the mass. So our patient has a right lateral ventricle mass which is attached to the septum pellucidum with multiple cystic foci giving appearances of Swiss cheese. SW images, there were multiple regions of low signal dropout, suggestion of microcalcifications or microhemorrhages. We saw intense neovascularity within the mass and there were regions of heterogeneous enhancement following intravenous contrast. Appearances are highly suggestive of central neurocytoma at pathology this indeed turned out to be WHO grade 2 central neurocytoma. This is an excellent research article where they describe the radiological and clinical pathological findings. Few take home points from this article. Central neurocytoma are classically seen along the anterior aspect of the lateral ventricles. Typical demographics would be an young adult as we saw in our case, typically in the age range of 20 to 40. These patients usually present early due to symptoms of elevated intracranial pressure from the obstructive hydrocephalus. In terms of imaging appearances, as we saw in a patient, there can be diffuse or diverse calcifications on CT images and MRI. Due to the multiple cyst, as we saw in a patient, there can be Swiss cheese or soap bubble appearances and they will demonstrate heterogeneous enhancement on MRI. The lesion classically would incorporate septum pellucidum in bilateral tumors and in unilateral tumors the lesion would be abetting the septum pellucidum as we saw in our patient. This article nicely describes the differential diagnosis for a patient with potential central neurocytoma. In a typical demographics and imaging appearances we can make the diagnosis of central neurocytoma other important diagnosis to consider would be ependymomas, subependymomas, oligodendrogliomas, SEGAS, choroid plexus papilloma, intraventricular meningioma, and metastasis. And you can refer to this article for various imaging findings of these potential differential diagnostic lesions. I hope you found this case of central neurocytoma to be interesting and informative. Thanks for your attention.